One of the uh, one of the most famous names that you'll ever come across in historic racing uh, from any era really would be Lister, and that uh, Lister's heyday, obviously in the fifties and early sixties, um, famous for Lister Jaguars and for uh, for the the later things they did with Sunbeam and, and various others. But uh, we're now seeing a a resurgence of the Lister name and. I'm with Lawrence Whitaker, um, who has uh, has been instrumental in bringing the Lister name back to the fore. Uh, where did it all start, Lawrence? Well, it all started with my father, who is an avid uh, classic car collection. Me and my father are on an insurance company called Warranty Wise. And uh, we don't uh, work so well together on a daily basis. So I said to him, you know, you need to go home and just buy and tinker with some classic cars. So, which is what he does on a daily basis. And he's got a big car collection, you know, Bentleys and Aston Martins and all sorts. And um, he bought a Lister Nobly, uh, a restoration project from New Zealand, brought it back um, to his to his uh, his barn in uh, Clitheroe in, in Lancashire. And um, it was through trying to restore this car that we came across Lister and we came across the brand and we, came, we, we started to learn more about it and we contacted George Lister Engineering, the factory in Cambridge, and you know, we, with a view to try and buy some parts you know, for this car and, and uh, for looking at blueprints and things like that. And we went down to see George Lister uh, Engineering, which Brian Lister had sold uh, quite a few years before. Um, and they had, you know, it was like an Aladdin's cave of Lister uh, car memorabilia, you know, they had the, um, the they had the original jigs, they had the original body books, they had the original blueprints, they had some parts, and this 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 is a factory that's now making cheese cellophane wrapping machines, you know, and they were um, they were unaware really of the historical importance of the stuff that they had in the back of their factory, and you know, great things as well, like great pictures of Margaret Thatcher sat in the car when she came to visit the factory, and such wonderful things that they had, um, and we were just in awe of it all. Uh, when we went to the factory and, and we, we asked them if, uh, you know, they would sell this stuff to us, you know, because they, they weren't using it and, um, you know, they, they said they would do. Uh, and we thought we were going to get a real bargain, that we were going to be able to buy Lister very, very cheaply and, and be able to start Lister up again uh, straight away. But then uh, our solicitors were doing the due diligence to buy the, all this stuff from George Lister Engineering. And um, we got a call from Lawrence Pierce, who, of course, uh, unbeknown to us at the time because we weren't racing experts. Um, owned the Lister IP, you know, so he owned all the, the Lister IP for the, the brand and he owned the Storm uh, IP and everything else that went along with it. And he was more hard to deal with than the uh, boys at the George Lister factory. You know, he was very, very, uh, a very shrewd businessman, didn't really want to sell um, the company. And uh, we tried to negotiate with him over and over and over again on the phone and uh, eventually we said to, I said to my dad we're gonna have to fly out to Portugal to see this guy you know and try and buy the company off him in face to face because we'd already bought all this stuff and it was useless of course without the the IP so we flew over to Portugal and we had a meeting with Lawrence and his wife Fiona uh, who were lovely lovely people and now we know them well um, and agreed the deal you know we bought the, the IP we bought the everything to do with the storm we, we, we and it's really putting Lister back together that was interesting you know so now the Lister brand and the, the Storm and the Nobly and all the other cars that we've made, you know, the Lister Bristol, the Lister Maserati, the Monzonapolis, uh, you know, the, the, even the Lister MGs, they're all together under one family company and we've called that company the Lister Motor Company Limited. So the Lister Motor Company Limited owns Lister Jaguar Limited, it owns Brian Lister Light Engineering, it owns Lister Storm Limited, it owns all the different companies, six different companies that we had to buy in order to put Lister back together. And, you know, we succeeded in doing that. Uh, in May 2013 uh, and immediately set about building 10 uh, Noblies to celebrate our 60th anniversary because uh, 1954 was when Brian Lister first built his, um, his, his Lister MG and you know we thought well how nice that 2014 is the 60th anniversary let's do something that, that you know s tells everyone we're back and the company is you know not, not, not the Lister was ever away but tells that tells of the fact that the company is back it's under one roof it's in new ownership and we're going to take the company forwards and put some money into the business and invest in it and uh, and get jobs back in the Cambridge factory. So we, we went to see George Lister again and we, we said, look, this is the Lister factory. We want to build the cars in the factory. Will you help us build them? You know, and, and so they were over the moon. I mean, they're expert engineers anyway, those people. And um, we brought some of the old guys back. So um, Colin uh, Crisp, 
whose uh, nickname is Chippy, and Graham uh, Hutton, whose nickname is uh, Curly. Who were the original guys who worked on the Lister in, 19, in the 1950s and 60s? Um, we brought them. I mean, we brought uh, Chippy out of retirement. He's, I think, he's 80 years old now. Um, but he's employed by the factory full time now to look over the project, make sure that we're building them exactly as they are to ni ni 1958 standards. And so we built 10 Noblies, um, and we, we've, we've just well, we've just built our first three. We've we've sold nine, so we've just got one left to sell. Um, but yeah, the, the response from the world's press has been fantastic. I mean, obviously Jaguar have now said they're going to build six E-type lightweights following on from what we did. So we're pleased to be able to, you know, carve the way for Jaguar there. And um, yeah, we're, you know, everyone couldn't have been nicer about Lister coming back. They really couldn't. And uh, I think, you know, when you see the car, um, I'm so proud of it. You know, it's, uh, I came from an insurance background and this is the first thing ever that I've, I've built. Um, you know, in a physical sense, rather than having a service industry, and you know, just to have a, a working, running physical car that we've manufactured is something very, very special, I think. And and we sit in um, in the rarefied atmosphere of, uh, of Salon Privé here in London, um, with some uh, some very, very high spec motor cars all around, and uh, and I have to say that the. The Lister looks fabulous in uh, in the black, and and that it's uh, it's clearly you know, raring to go. Are you building these as race cars, or are they collection cars, or are they road cars? What are they? Well, we set out uh, offering a race car and a road car, so you can choose when you order one from us. Do you want to take it historic racing? Of course, these cars are eligible for historic race events. That's why we made them to the exact 58 specifications. Um, if you want to use it for the road, we've had uh, several customers say they want to use these cars on the road. Um, we can uh, do that for you, no problem. They'll pass an IVA test just as a, a brand new car would be. They'd be a brand new number plate. Um, the cars would not need an MLT for three years, and you know we, you know, and then just need its normal MLT. So yeah, we can supply them for road use or for race use. Um, slightly more expensive for road use because there's about 50 different changes that needs to happen on the car: indicators, wipers, seat belts, etc. Um, you know, but the yeah, and, and customers are, you know, some customers want to put it in a garage and just look at it. Some customers want to use them on the road. We've had some customers that want to drive them from the UK to, you know, around Europe, and uh, and we've had some customers who want to take them straight to Donington and race them around the track. You know, so I mean, it's it's a variety of different customers that have sought us out. Um, but yeah, equally, we're happy to do anything that uh, any customer wants. We've had one gentleman uh, customer who's. Uh, slightly more portly let's say than uh, than some other customers and he wants the car wider you know so we've, we've made a brand new chassis and a brand new body that's going to be a whole inch wider uh, than the standard car to give him more interior room um, so we're willing to do anything that customers want uh, you know within reason and with uh, with these cars what's the split been so far in terms of racers versus road cars and 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 wh where does that lie it's exactly straight down the middle. Half the cars we've sold are race cars, half the cars we've sold are road cars. This particular car at Salon Privé is a, is a race uh, version of the car. Um, there's slightly differences in the engine. I mean, if you want a road-going car and you just want to use it on the road full-time, there's slightly uh, slight differences in the compression ratios of the engine because this car won't idle too quietly. You know, it'll idle at about 2,000 RPM, whereas obviously you don't want to be idling at 2,000 RPM at the traffic lights. And, uh, and obviously a race car is designed to always move, so there's always air rushing through the... Um, the grills and of course a, a road car would need fans and it needs louvers in the bonnet to help cool the car so there is going to be a marked difference but half uh, half and half really at the moment have been uh, a race and half half road cars yeah which obviously justifies your decision in the first place which must be very gratifying obviously I mean, I, I spend a lot of my time walking around uh, race car paddocks all over the world and with historic cars uh, you can look at a lot of them. I have to be careful how I say this. And they're perhaps not in the same way as somebody who built a car in 55 or 60 would, uh, would anticipate. What's your take on that in terms of, of where, th where your car fits within that? Well, I think our car is a lot better than the 1958 Lister, <laughs> you know, I mean, the cars were thrown together. Um, but these, uh, this particular car that we built, I mean, uh, in all intents and purposes, the car is an exact copy of a 1958 Lister Jaguar. I mean, they're, they're, we have gone to a great length. Um, Brian Lister himself has been very helpful in designing, uh, you know, making sure we get the design right of the car. He's been to the factory a few times to look over the car and, you know, told us little things that he's done differently that we would never have known, you know, like we, we just changed that little bit there, we changed that little bit here, and those things help. Um, 
But and, and it's lucky that Brian is alive and well and able to tell us those things because I think if we were trying to do this in another you know 20 years, uh, you know, uh, we would struggle. But I think um, the people that we've needed are still in existence that have been able to help us uh, with this car, and that has been a, a blessing. It really, really has. Um, in terms of where the car sits historically, in terms of race-wise, I mean, I, I, you know, the the, um, the the Sterling Moss Trophy, which is perhaps the, the biggest race for for uh, pre-1960 cars like ours, have been very, very supportive. I mean, they they just, I mean, there are, as you know, there are so many replicas of these cars out there that people have made in the garages and at home, and those cars aren't. Uh, exact 1958 continuations. They are things that people have made in their, in their in their homes, and a lot of these cars have E-type engines rather than D-type engines. They don't have the wide angle cylinder head, and and the thing is that the, the historic racing guys have been forced to let these cars to race, been forced to let these cars race because they otherwise they wouldn't have a race, you know, because there's not enough cars out there. Whereas now, I think because the historic racing scene is getting busy. Um, they can pick and choose and say, well, this car isn't quite as exact replica as it should be, so we're not going to let that car race. Um, I think, and, and we've been, we've worked very closely with the scrutineers when we've, we've been building this car to ensure that they will, uh, this will set a new standard where people will say, well, this is what it should be like. Um, and that is definitely what our car is like. You know, it, it is an exact replica. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the cars race, and I know a lot of customers will, will race the cars, and, and this car should be very competitive. I mean, one thing that, uh, one interesting fact, which it will be interesting to see when the cars do start racing, is an, an original Nobly weighed 867 kilograms, whereas uh, some of the Noblies that race at the moment, they're weighing in at 1.1 tons. So, you know, you think, well, where is that weight? Where has it been added over the years? I mean, for example, our cars have hollow hubs, which is something that Brian Lister did. Um, that, that nobody else has done uh, since really you know so we, we, we've done that again and our car will weigh in at uh, the original weight so I mean I'm, I'm interested to see how with the same brake horsepower how much quicker a modern car will be I know everyone will say oh well bloody hell they're cheating because they've got a new car you know but the fact of the matter is that over the last 50 60 years cars get changed don't they um, you know and, and when they get a bit you know they get bumped or they, well, something happens they get filler in them they get changed they get they, they get heavier all the time and um, I think our cars will be very competitive because they are so original. I really do, and that, that's that's great news. It's, it certainly will be interesting. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, Lawrence. That uh, to see new versus old head to head, bearing in mind that that there are probably no historic racing cars that are original in that they've all lived full and interesting lives. Let's say, and that they've uh, they've all been through that. So yeah, I, th I think it's it's going to be something worth seeing. Obviously. For most people, the Lister name will always be linked with Jaguar in terms of, of what what we have here. And, and for clarification's sake, we're talking about uh, what has become known as the uh, the Nobly Lister. Um, but what other plans do you have for the for the brand, for the name? Where do we go from here? Well, we have a lot of plans going forwards. Um, you know, we I can't really just tell you all of them just right now because we're saving them up for a future press release. <laughs> but... Um, the um, I, mean, I think the thing that attracted me most to Lister when, when I bought the company was that the fact it was called Lister Jaguar Limited. I mean, how special is that that you can buy a company called Lister Jaguar? And, and you know, there's a there's a letter floating about that from William Lyons to Brian Lister saying he's got his permission to call the company Lister Jaguar Limited. I mean, how nice is that? You know, that is for me that is what attracted me to the business and that's that that historic uh, nature of it. And if I can be a very small part of that, then that's that's very very pleasing. But um, for the future, I think, yeah, well, I want to see the list of brands out there a lot more. I want to see it up there with, uh, you know, I think we need more brand recognition. I think the people on most, most people on the street don't, don't know what a lister is still, um, you know, and, and, and it, it definitely wants to, for, for me, I, I think that to build the brand up into a, um, a, a, you know, a future racing brand would be very, very interesting. Um, as well as a future road car brand as well. I, I think I see a link in the future with, with Jaguar on some new vehicles. I think that would be nice because Jaguar doesn't seem to have uh, a tuning house like BMW may have Alpina and Mercedes has Brabus. There isn't really someone like that for like Jaguar. And, and, and of course, Land Rover have got Overfinch and people like that. You know, So I think maybe a tie up there in the future would be nice. Um, but there's lots of different avenues we could take and uh, we've got our own plans, but, but as I say, they'll be released when, when, we're, when we're ready next year. Well, uh, yes, I've, I certainly wouldn't want to uh, push you too far on that, Lawrence. But, but clearly, there is a big future for uh, for all sorts of things, Lister, uh, from from here on in. And uh, interesting to to hear you say that maybe road cars are are part of what that future is about. So, without wanting to break any confidences, 
is it not only going to be about purely recreations? Is it uh, is it moving forward from there? Yeah, definitely. I mean, don't forget Lister. If you look at all the cars that Lister have ever made, uh, equal number of road cars have been made to race cars. You know, the the Lister Le Mans. Uh, road car, which was an XJS based uh, Lister uh, Jaguar, they made 90 of those cars. You know, I mean, that is a lot of road cars to make, and and, and those cars sold for 90,000 pounds each in 1987. I mean, that was when 90,000 pounds for a car was an awful lot of money, and it still is, uh, <laughs> I think. But uh, you know, the um, you know, so I think Lister has had a history of road car uh, manufacture, obviously under Lawrence Pierce. Um, and a lot of people who race their listed nobles use them on the road, of course. And I would like to say we will make more continuations. Um, definitely more, um, maybe a Costin uh, continuation, maybe a list of Bristol continuation, maybe a list of Maserati continuation. Um, you know, and, and, and that, that is not, uh, you know, not far from the realms of uh, a, a possibility that we'll do those very, very soon. Um, but yeah, for the for the immediate uh, future, we're just concentrating on the Nobleys and uh, and building. Uh, obviously, we've got orders now for nine cars. It's going to take us a year and a half to build nine cars. We we're not exactly Toyota in terms of how fast we can build these things. And it's 500 hours going to the body alone, hand bashing the body out of aluminium. You know, this this the, the skills that are required to build our car are very much you know old style car making skills, which is why the car is so special. I think, and um, it's. Um, it's, it's it, you know why it looks so good. I mean, like you say, it's sat here on the lawn, and I can see three LaFerraris from where I'm sat. And the fact that we've got a Lister here and it looks so good, it's just so pleasing to me. You know, it's it's very very uh, very special. But very clearly, uh, you have a lot of ideas, and that uh, there's there's an awful lot of things going on in your head for for the future, and uh, and we'll watch that very very carefully because. Uh, you are a custodian of a of a fantastic name, and uh, that I think you have everybody on side in terms of wanting to see that succeed. But uh, we'll uh, we'll certainly keep an eye on that. For now, Lawrence Whitaker, thank you very much for talking to HistoricRacingNews.com.